Next up on our Meet the Athlete series, we are taking a look at the ever controversial Evan Singleton. So, Evan Singleton, a well talked about strongman over the last few years, someone that I saw very early on in his career and was super impressed by. And I, right from the start, expected to see great things from Evan. And we've seen great things from Evan, just not at World's Strongest Man. No, not at the one place he really wants to be able to put together his best performance. It just hasn't happened for him, and we'll go into that in a minute. So, should we look at some stats and facts about Mr. Singleton? Let's do it. So Evan won his first ever strongman competition, which was North Carolina's Strongest Man in 2018. And that qualified him for the Giants Live North American Open later that same year, where he placed eighth. So far, Evan has competed in nine Giants Live competitions, finishing on the podium in six of them and taking the win in three. The North American Open in 2019, and then in 2021, he won the World Open and the Arnold's UK. Evan is returning to the World's Strongest Man for his fourth appearance, but so far, as we touched upon, his appearances at Worlds have been pretty disastrous by Evan's standards. In the 2020 heats, he was injured. In the 2021 heats, he suffered food poisoning. And then last year, he suffered an allergic reaction in the heats. So more than anything, Evan probably just desperately, first off, wants to make the final. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, Evan is such an intense athlete. Yeah. And that intensity, is a strength at times, and it can be his biggest weakness at times as well. And once he has this, this ability to understand how to control it, how to kind of switch on when he needs to, and then kind of back off when he needs to, I think he's going to be an absolute force. He's already proven what he's capable of in many one-day shows. Yeah. There's really no big weakness when you see him at his best. His biggest weakness right now is himself. <laughs> and I think he's kind of enemy. got into his head a little bit. And I think the best thing for Evan this year going to Worlds is ignore all things like this. Ignore all the build-up to World's Strongest Man. Focus on your training. Because if Evan goes in at a steady 85% Evan, I'd expect him to cruise to the final. Yeah, I would too. Because we've seen what he can do. And I don't think there's any events that you could throw at Evan where he wouldn't just do well overall. Yeah, he's got events that he's extremely good at. And yeah. I think he'd need those extremely good events to, to be a challenge to win this year's title. Yeah, but so. let's take a look at the events that we've got in the heats to start with. So the first event in the heats is the loading race. Now, Evan is an incredibly fast athlete. Last year at the World Open, he was a split second behind Mitch Hooper and just around one second behind Pablo Nekonechny, who are both also incredibly quick. But he hasn't had good loading races at Worlds. Now, last year, I expected him. It was the first event and we thought it would go really well. But he fumbled so badly. And I don't know if it was nerves, too much adrenaline going on or what. But he hasn't been able to bring that sort of loading race before performance that we've seen from him to World's Strongest Man. And that, I think one of the issues with Worlds, and I found this an issue when I was convened at World's Strongest Man, there's so much dead time and waiting around mm -hmm. and that kind of, when you're such an intense athlete like him, you can almost have too much time thinking about events and it can kind of cause problems. And a loading event is one of those events where it's very easy to make a mistake with. Mm -hmm. All the athletes tend to be strong enough to do everything. Yeah. Obviously there's varying degrees of speed, but we know he's fast. He's a fast athlete. He's relatively fit for such a big man. And he's got a good kind of wingspan. He's got long arms, very strong hands. So he has all the attributes to be very good at this type of event. The only thing is making sure he nails the performance. And, and like I said, I mean, it's an event he could win. Yeah or he could mess up on. Yeah. He needs, in my opinion, a good solid start. If he has the start, gets first or second place, I think that's gonna settle the nerves. Yeah. And then you've got more of the traditional type events that are harder to mess up on. He should feel, okay, I've got a good start. I can take that pressure off myself. Yeah. I think this is gonna be key for Evan in his performance this year is understanding when to really kind of put the foot on the pedal and give 100% and when to hold back a little bit. Mm. He might be worth, in my opinion, just holding back a fraction and saying, okay, I take second or third on this event, but I get the points on the board really rather than go for broke yeah. and risk that mistake. Because I think if he has a mistake on this first one, his head's going to go. I think and going there... He'll take risks then and the future events. Yeah. yeah. So it's an interesting one. And you, I've seen this... I had a long chat with um, Magnus Samuelson about this. Magnus and then, though, Magnus. No, Magnus Samuelson. Oh, really? Yeah, Magnus oh, okay. Samuelson. No, I wasn't Make confused your pardon, then. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you I was talking, I, No, 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 not this time. <laughs> and he, he used to kind of think, you know, I can go quicker. Yeah. 
but sometimes if you go quicker you're on that verge of then dropping or making a mistake <laughs> and sometimes you have to think about the whole competition the heats are just about qualifying for the final you don't win world strongest man on that first event so i think a good solid performance nice points and it will give him that boost of confidence that he needs so all being well, if the, the loading goes well, you can't really mess up the deadlift machine that much. It's about six or seven reps normally, depending on how many barrels they're gonna use, and it comes down to speed. Now Evan's advantage on a deadlift is he's a very explosive deadlifter. Yes. He pulls fast. Mm. It, if you kind of watch the way he did this, he's very, very powerful on the floor. And against the absolute best guys, if we're talking about deadlift for reps or a one-off deadlift for max, he may be, just because of that power he has off the floor, lacks a little bit of lockout power. And I'm talking against the extreme best here. He's still course, seriously yeah. good. But this deadlift really suits that power off the floor and that speed. He could get through the same amount of reps as anyone else, but do it quicker. Yeah, and can he maybe use the machine to really help him with that lockout as well? You can hitch it. You can yeah. hitch it. So as long as he's getting it over those knees, he can kind of then adjust, use the quads more to kind of lock out at the top. So I think very good deadlift for him, and he should be able to get good points on this first or second, I think, against mm. pretty much... You, you, you're never going to have all the best deadlifters in the same no, group. So you would hope not. You, you definitely. So yeah, I can't mm. see him doing worse than a second place on this one. Next up is the log ladder. And again, I just feel... It's something that's very easy to make a mistake on with the transitions, especially. It's not a standard log lift for reps. Last year, he came back and did the log and he ended up collapsing, but still getting up and carrying on. He's, he's, he's got warrior. no quit in him, yeah. has he? And, and, you know, it, it just comes down to him being smart, going in there thinking, right, I need to get good points. Log is a great event for Evan. Any overhead is a great event for Evan. Actually, his deadlift was considered a weakness in the past, and he's brought that up. Mm. But the overhead work has always been there. Very good at dumbbell, very good at log and he should be able to get good points on this. It does, again, come down to him being, maybe thinking, okay, 90% is enough. I've just got to make the final. I don't need to win World's Strongest Man in the heats. I don't know if Evan knows how to go at 90%. That's, that's, and that's why he's such an interesting character to watch. Yeah. I mean, love him or hate him, and people's kind of opinion is completely mixed when it comes to him. I genuinely love him. I think I love he's him great. Too. Yeah. But I sometimes just want to kind of put a leash on him and just be like, Evan, <laughs> hold back just a little bit, buddy. You don't need this extra rep. Just get to the final. And, and yet, you know, I genuinely believe last year he could have made the final going at a steady pace. Absolutely. The exciting thing when you predict and watch Evan is you just don't know what's going to turn up. He could, come, he could come and be blisteringly good in the heats and then falter in the final. He could kind of mess up. He could just cruise into the final. This You don't know what Evan's going to turn up. But if you look at the results, he's a very good log lifter and I think he should get good points on this one. Next up is the Conan Circle. Now, looking at Evan's track record, I wasn't able to find him having done a Conan's or even like a max a carry for distance, max distance. But everything tells me he should be good. We've talked about his really long arms, his fitness, even the shape of him. Everything like tells you that he should be good at this type of event. Yeah, and he's a determined man as well. You, yes. know, he, he, you know he'll try till the very end. He'll go until he collapses. Yeah, th yeah. There's no kind of data to go off. No. And again, I kind of think, you know, if he goes in there karma and, and kind of puts in a performance he'll pick up the points mm. it's it's being strategic in this group stage and i'm repeating myself now but it really comes down to that for evan he's more than good enough i don't see any big weakness with evan no you, know, you look at some athletes and say, oh they're really good at this they're really good at this but that's a really weak event he doesn't have a really weak event he just needs to perform. Next up is the kettlebell throw. And again, it's something we haven't seen a lot of from Evan, but he has done the bag over bar at the Shaw Classic twice, and he's come eighth and fifth there. Again, it's one of those events where it's easy to make a mistake, isn't it? It is. Again, he's got all the attributes to be good. Yeah. And the Shaw Classic has a lot of decent throwers at normally. So it to does, come fifth yeah. in that is not bad at all. I think if you can come fifth in that, it's going to be hard to see you placing less than third in your group. Yeah. Because again, it comes down to, to who's in there. Yeah. Um, if you think about the Shaw Classic, you would have had a Maxime, you would have had a Brian Shaw, exactly, you know, some of these yeah. exceptional throwers. So he's, a, he's more than capable, but it is one of those events that you can mess up. Mm. And that is the question mark when it comes to Evan. He could be first, he could be last. And yeah. that is the reality of an event like this one. And then finally, it's the stone off. Now, looking at Evan's track record, when he's in contention to win, his stones are incredibly good. And this is something you've talked about a lot. Yeah. Um, not so good when he's off the mark 
overall. Yeah. Okay. We've never seen him do a stone off before. No, we haven't. And I think Evan's in that group of athletes that, you know, he's more than capable of winning a stone off. He's just not a guarantee. I think if he's in the stone off, he wants to be in second place. Yes. So he's got that advantage going over third place. Yeah. Um, there is a slight advantage to, to the whoever ends up second in the group. Yeah, you just return the stone rather than... Absolutely. Um, and yeah, he, he's a very, very accomplished stone lifter. He's won some stone um, runs. runs in competition. Mm. This is about repetitions at the end with the, the heavy stone. So we'll see. I think it could be an interesting one. I think ideally he wants to win his group, which I think will be hard because I think there's going to be five guys that will be seeded above him. Yeah. Um, but I cannot see him, as long as he puts in a solid performance, being outside the top three. Yeah. And really, he should be able to cruise through at 80, 85% and be in that top three. And yeah, then, definitely. Yeah. He, he, unless you're up against a Tom Stoltman or a Brian Shaw, he's got a chance of beating anyone on stones. Yeah. So we know that if he turns up in shape, stays calm, he is a potential finalist for sure. Definitely, definitely. And the first event in the final is the Fingles Fingers. Now, I've actually managed to find him doing Fingles, and it was in 2019. It was actually a medley, Duck Walk into the Fingers. Mm. And he won the event. This was at Festival de Hummus in okay, Canada. In Canada yeah. So he beat some really good guys. He beat JF Caron, Trey Mitchell, Bobby Thompson, etc. So, And, he won and he's event. got the ability to be very good at Fingers. He's we very know. tall, isn't he? Here. He's got, you know, he's tall, he's strong, yeah. his lockout strength is good in terms of like overhead, mm. and he, you know, he's just got that natural power to kind of muscle them over. So, yeah. yeah, I think the fingers could be a very good event for Evan. And then it's the Kanak deadlift for reps. Again, we haven't seen him on this setup because he didn't make the final the year they did it in so, 21. Like we said, Evan is a solid deadlifter. I think the deadlift, um, barrel deadlift, is better suited for him. I think so too. I think he's going to score decent points on a deadlift in any competition. Yeah. But in the final, there'll be a lot of good deadlifters. So I, I think somewhere sort of mid-table would be where we see Evan on a deadlift for reps. Then we have the shield carry. And again, going back to the Conans, we don't have the data, but everything tells us Evan should be good at a shield carry. Yeah, I, I think so. Like I said, with, with him, it all comes down to him on the day. It but <laughs> I think if he makes the final, he's going to be a bit more relaxed. Yeah, so. oh, massively. That would be such a huge weight off his shoulders. Yeah, I think he can kind of take that pressure off himself, go in and enjoy it, and then really show people what he's capable of. Yeah. Next is the Max Dumbbell, and Evan is incredibly good at Dumbbell. He won the Dumbbell for Reps at the Shaw Classic in 2021. Yeah, this will, this will be an event that Evan will look forward to. Yes. His Dumbbell is very, very good. We do have some exceptional Dumbbell presses in the World's Strongest Man this year. It all depends on who makes the final, obviously. Mm. But I'm looking forward to seeing Evan on that if he gets the opportunity. Could be big points for him. Yeah. Now, we haven't seen an awful lot of truck pulling from Evan because it is usually a World's Strongest yeah. Man event but we did see him do it in 2019 at the Arnold Africa we know how good Mateusz is at truck pull and he actually won the event beating Mateusz and Alexei Novikov yeah, there's some pretty good people to be beating on a truck pull. Yes. Didn't Alexi win the bus pull last year? Yes, he did. Which was incredible, to be honest. It was incredible. And the one thing I will <laughs> say about a truck pull is they do vary surface dependent. Of course, you know, yeah. there's there's lots of factors when it comes to a vehicle pull. It's not always the same. So you do see some kind of interesting results, but he has all the attributes to be good. He's got those that powerful grip. He's mm. got strong legs. He's got kind of big body weight. Everything needed to be a good truck puller. Yeah. And then finally, of course, finishing on the Atlas Stones. And like we said, when he's been in contention for a win, he's always done very well on the Stones. But this is going to be a tough lineup of stone lifters, no doubt. Absolutely. We've got some amazing stone lifters in there. And if Evan is at this point still in the competition and fighting hard, yeah. <laughs> he's going to be, you know, I don't think he wins the Stones. But I think he's definitely an athlete that's capable of doing them all, yeah. which puts you in a dangerous position. And it's just going to come down to Evan himself. If he performs how he can, the way things training are going, he looks really, really good. It's going to come down to how much does that pressure build as he gets closer and closer? Because the one thing that concerns me with Evan is the amount of pressure he puts on himself. Absolutely. And if you think you're an athlete that should have made the final three times already, he's thinking in his head, I have to make the final. I think yeah. if he can control that pressure that's going to be building, we could see a big performance. Mm. It's whether he controls it and understands that, okay, the heat's his one phase, then I focus on the final, 
or if he's going to, I mean, he puts out a lot of stuff out there saying, you know, he's going to destroy everyone. He's going to do this, do that. And that puts pressure on yourself because if you don't back it up, people yeah, say stuff. And but that with egg on your face. The, the reality is he's a three-time Giants Live winner. He's won international shows. He's beaten the best of the best in yeah. many different events and competitions. And there's no big weakness that's obvious with, with Evan. Yeah. He's got all the tools. I wish him the best of luck. I want to see him do well. I want to see him do I, really well. In terms of, uh, like, we're not doing predictions yet, but I think he could do anything from sort of like fourth place in the final I think to so. not making the final. Yeah, absolutely. Depending on him. He, yeah. He's that kind of athlete that could kind of vary greatly. I don't see him winning yet, even no. at his best. I think there's a couple of athletes who are just a bit more experienced. And these wouldn't be the events. Like, his real strengths, car walk, yoke, farmer's frame, that none of them are here this year, right? Absolutely. They? But very dangerous athlete, could cause problems for a lot of people, could cause problems for himself. Yes. Right, guys, hope you're enjoying this series. Auntie Liz is putting a lot of work into it, so make sure you go and give her a follow on Instagram. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe to the channel, and we'll catch you guys next time. Take care. Stay strong.